Welcome to my video. I'll trust you'll find it helpful and informative. Please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you. So, so this is where we ended. We said 22,473 positive we can consider. Now we say, hey man, that's fantastic. Yes. So, if it's what is expected, it's still positive. Yes. Yes. You can live with a zero, one rand even. Okay. Now we say, man, if it, if it beats 15%, how good is this investment? Let's have a look at 20. So now everything stays the same, but the cost of capital is 20%. It's the only thing that changes. The cash outflow is still exactly the same. The inflows are exactly the same. The difference is that this factor here has now changed from 1.15 to 1.2 because your percentage is now 20%. 20% is 0 0.2, 0 0.2 plus 1 is 1.2. Okay, you get that. So now we do the calculations again. Now these values are a little less. So your positive values are now less, while your negative value stays the same. And then when you add them up, you get to a negative value. And if the value is negative, you abandon. Okay. Because it's not it's not meeting your expectations. But now we can actually calculate the next one, which is the internal rate of return. Because there I had a positive value, there I had a negative value. Okay. Now here we get the internal rate of return. Let me just say that I have this is an assignment. Um, I've not seen it in a test yet, and I've never seen this in the exam. So they expect you to do this only as part of the assignment. Okay, normally. And I don't think it'll change. Okay, so with one positive and one negative value, we can calculate the internal rate of return. When we used the net present value technique, we found the following. 50% yielded the positive value, 20% yielded a negative value. So we can now use the following formula to calculate the internal rate of return. We take the positive rate. Then we add in brackets the positive number, not the positive rate, over the sum of the numbers. Okay? And this, in, when we use this sum of the numbers, we state both of them as positive, even though uh, one was negative in our calculation. Okay, the formula is just designed that way. We close the bracket and we then multiply that with the difference in rates. Now, what I've done here is I've just added the brackets so that you can see it. If you calculate it and you add the just replace the values in line on your in line calculator. It will give you the right return. So here we go. The positive rate was 15%. Now, please, now we don't say percent here. The answer is going to be in percent. Okay. So it's 15 plus our positive value, 22,473, divided by the sum of the two. Okay multiply by the difference of the two rates, which is 5%, and then you get to 19.07. Okay. So basically, guys, when you do this in the assignment, simply copy that, put it in a Word or Excel, replace the values, do the calculation, and that's the only time you need to do it. So clearly, the ICB at some point decided that this is a little difficult, so we're not going to ask the guys to do too, much, too many of these sums, only in the assignment. Okay. So that is with regard to the internal rate of return. And now, Vanessa, I'm going to listen to you. I'm not going to stop the recording because that was very quick. Okay. So now let's have a look at the payback period technique. So once again, 
we take the same information as given for the net present value, but we assume that they are buying the machine for less. 490 rand ex and 90, well, 190,000 rand excluding VAT. See, that's why I cannot be so critical of that man. It can happen to all of us. <laughs> I'm just going to blame it on the fact that I'm not the fir uh, uh, English first language speaker. <laughs> 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 so now there is no other calculation. We don't have to divide it by anything because we are not considering the time value of money. So we have a cash outflow used brackets again to show that it's negative. Now we have a cash inflow of 60. Now it works different. We say, OK, I'm standing at negative 190,000. I get 60,000 in what's the balance? It's a it's negative 130,000. I get 70,000 in. What's the balance? Negative 60,000. I get 80,000 in. I don't care about the balance. Because I've already exceeded the period. OK, so now it's it, we see the following. The loan will clearly be paid back before the end of the third year. You can see that now because somewhere in this third year we are canceling out the negative 60,000. So how do we now calculate it? We say, OK, the balance that was left is 60,000. OK, my income that I expect in that year is 80,000. So 60,000 over 80,000. And I multiply it with 12. Why? Because there's 12 months in a year. That's the reason. And then I get an answer of 0 0.75 years. OK, and really you can stop there. You can stop there. I've n Actually, I want to say to you, when you do the calculation in the test or the exam, stop there because it's going to be a fill-in value. It's a stupid fill-in value, but it's a fill-in value, so you need to stick to it. What you would do is you would say 0 0.75 is really three quarters of the year. There's 12 months in a year, so three quarters of that is nine. So the real answer should be two years and nine months. But for the purposes of your calculation, your answer is going to be 2.75 years. Do you get that? OK, simple enough now. Please do yourself a favor just to humor yourself and and go and look in the scan document. Um, how the author tried and explained this, this to you. Um, and then ignore it forever because you'll be so confused. I have no idea. This is the reason I'm rewriting this. OK, now the last thing in this chapter is a question on financial reports. OK. Please understand that this little table that you have in here. Is somewhere in a test or even in the exam. This is the way it is asked. They say to you, summarize the difference between statutory financial reports or those that's due to SARS and management reports in tabular form. And then this is the answer. Okay, so it works like this. So financial reports are required by SARS on an annual basis. Okay. But it serves as a powerful management tool for business in the day to day running of the business as well. You can't just wait. And, and and look at your financial reports once a year. Um, you might find out you're bankrupt when you still think it was going fine. OK, so what are the statutory financial reports? The first thing is your annual financial statements, which consist of certain things that you learned about in bookkeeping. It consists of your income statement, your statement of financial position, or just really um, your balance sheet, Statement of financial position and balance sheet is the same thing. And you've possibly picked up by now that the two terms are used interchangeably all the time. OK, then you have a statement of cash flow. Which is the simple one, you simply draw that one from your bank statements. It's there. And then you have the notes to the financial statements because some of the things in the financial statement needs explaining. If you get to do financial statements, 
if we if you if you all perform well and we convince computer share that instead of just investing in new first years it's actually better to stick with what they know and invest with you for second year then you will do financial statements next year okay then also what must be submitted to SARS is the VAT return and the tax return, the, the income tax return, the, the EMP 201 at the end of the month. These things are you must submit to SARS. Then there are things that you want to show management or that the managers want to see in a business because they know that this is the information that we can use. Okay, It's the monthly financial statements that sets out the profit and losses that still says what is our financial position now at the end of the month, not at the end of the year. Statements of cash flow for the month, not for the year. And then the budget comparisons. What budget comparisons? Those that we did in the beginning of this chapter. Uh, where was it? There. Okay. Those deviations that we talked about on five slides five and five uh, slides six. Then wages and salary reports. The government clearly don't care about that too much, too much. That's why you have so many ghost workers, scary people. Thank you for watching this video to the end. If you found it valuable, please subscribe and like. Thank you.